Kelly Vaughn and welcome to Inside Indy. And today we're going inside a very special event, a networking event here in Indianapolis that is oh so popular. And here to tell us about this special event is Katina Washington. And you are the creator of the She event, right? Yes, ma'am. Welcome to Inside Indy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, take us there. Um, I had not heard about this uh, okay. until um, Fran Washington Daniels was telling me about the event and how spectacular it was, and she told me about you. So I said, got to have her in on the show <laughs> uh, because it's coming up soon. So those who are watching, you want to learn about it, but you also want to attend. So tell us what the SHE event is. The SHE event, which SHE stands for SHE Has Everything, it is an ultimate networking experience. What we do is we create a marketplace for black owned businesses to present their businesses to the community and everything is in an effort to recycle dollars in the community. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Now you said she has everything. So yeah. why that name? Why that <laughs> title? Well, initially it started out as women who were uh, representing their businesses there at the SHE event. Mm -hmm. And now we have, uh, as a collective, added men into the event. But nice. okay. <laughs> initially, okay. that that's the reason for the name. She has everything. Because a lot of the businesses that were there in the beginning, they were businesses that were grassroots businesses for women. Okay. okay. And so, yeah, that's why we chose the name. OK, so tell us if, well, let's get the date and time and location down first. That way we can put that out there multiple times during the broadcast and that okay. way in case somebody's kind of maybe they went to the kitchen to get some <laughs> milk and cereal oil they won't miss the, you know the 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 big event the time of the okay day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the event takes place on August 3rd okay. at Lafayette Square Mall and it is from 11:30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. and it will be throughout the entire mall. Wow. Yes. So when you enter the mall, there will be vendors in the entrance and going both ways, both left and right. Seriously? Yes. And then also we'll have vendors in the food court to include two food trucks that we will bring into the mall. Wow. Yeah. So total we'll have 135 vendors. Are you serious? Yes. We'll have 135 <laughs> vendors. And uh, about 10 of those vendors are kidrepreneurs, is what we call them. Kidrepreneurs? Kidrepreneurs. Okay. They are kids who own their own business. Get out. No. So we'll have them, and we'll also have farmers there. So ah. before you enter the building, we'll also have farmers. Wow. Now, do, it, you know what you sound like you have there, though? I don't know if you realize this. That's exactly how Indiana Black Expo started. Oh, wow. Yeah. With the, how old are you? I am 47. Okay, so yeah, so you you were mm -hmm. around in some of its humble beginnings, but yeah. it started at the Indiana State Fair. Oh and yeah, they exhibition booths, and there weren't that many back then. And mm -hmm. of course, we ended up being the biggest black exposition in the country. But what you're doing is like a mini expo, and mm -hmm. really not many because I don't know how many vendors they have at expo, but 130 is that's quite a few. Yeah. 135 vendors. How do you recruit all those vendors? That's amazing. Uh, boots on the ground. Like I go around and travel and recruit vendors. We have vendors from Tennessee, from Alabama, from Atlanta, from Iowa, Dayton, Ohio, Chicago, um, let's see, St. Louis. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot of vendors that travel to this event now. Initially it was local vendors, but uh -huh. now it's spread out. So now, is the opportunity to be a vendor, is it closed? And, and I'm trying to think when this will air, but <laughs> is the opportunity, the door still open for that, or are you, are you booked? We are booked. Actually, um, when this initially started, I was begging vendors to be part of this event. And now we have a wait list right now of over 100 vendors. <sighs> yeah, and then uh, when we recruited vendors for this August SHE event, it went out the first week of April, and it was full in two days. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Now, how mm -hmm. many years have you been doing this then? Seven years now. Seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Initially, just... it wasn't called the SHE event. It was just kind of something where I would get ladies together, you know, uh -huh. and do something on that same level. But we officially got a name about four years ago. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um... Since she has everything, it looks like you have everything here on the uh, <laughs> on our our bench. 
So are these some of the items that we might see if we were these to These are some of the shopping? items. Now, um, before Take it was, shopping. look, before it was named She Has Everything, um, it was myself, my niece, and my friend. Okay. And my niece did shoes, so the S was for shoes. The H was for hot accessories, which I create accessories, and the E was for eats, and my friend was a caterer. Okay. So yeah, about four years, about four or five years ago, I think we changed the name. Oh, but okay. uh, some items that I have here, this is handmade soaps that you can okay. find there at the She event. It's made into a rose. Mm, and it's, nice. Okay. Yeah. And um, that's one of our vendor, mm -hmm. vendors. It's Alicia's All Natural. Okay. This is one of the bracelets from one of our kitchenpreneurs, and she okay. makes this these by hand, and Aww. that's a jade bracelet. And how old is the kid that does You this? know, I don't know, no. but uh, as long as they are Aww. under the age of 18, they're considered a kitchenpreneur. Okay. And I, nice. um, the kitchenpreneurs that signed up initially in our SHE event and met the deadline, they all received $100 towards their business. Wow. Yeah, which was funded by the SHE event. This is another one of our vendors called Har Harmonious Insight, and this is a Zen bath. I thought it was something I could eat. Oh, no, it's a Zen <laughs> bath, and it's all natural. Wow, detox mm -hmm. salt bath soak. Yes. Dead seed salt, pink Himalayan salt, Epsom salt, uh, sodium bicarbonate. Wow, therapeutic grade essential mm. oils. Nice. Oh, yes. And dried flowers. Wow. And all of these vendors will be there at the August she nice. event. These okay. are custom bangles, and these are created by Teacuffs by Tina, and mm -hmm. she's another one of our vendors. Nice. So if you have a custom idea that you like, she can transfer it on to a charm and put wow. it on a bangle for you. I'm thinking these go in my ear. Look. <laughs> they do. Cool. They wow, do. That's cute. Oh, my gosh. She is everything. Love it. Yes, and so this is one of our candles that is made by A Scent mm. of Sunshine. Mm -hmm. That's Erica Kaiser Powell. Mm. Smells amazing. And then oh, she has goodness. a little message on the back of each Smiles candle. Smells are contagious. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so now, that's, I know uh, Fran does the um, candles to the desserts that look like desserts. Is she oh, a yeah. vendor? Then? She is a vendor. Oh, man. Those are hot. Those are hot. She commodity. is a vendor. And she yeah. was very strategic about being a vendor, too. Oh, I bet she was. <laughs> yeah. These are from She's another one of our kitchenpreneurs, uh, sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Can I see that? Okay, oh, I like sure. Those. those are cool. Okay. Oh my God! And her okay. name is Amani. Look, you got this, <laughs> Elton John. Eat your heart out. There you yeah. go. <laughs> those are cute. Are these They're custom so made? No, those are not custom made. But um, she has her own sunglass She's got, company. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, a lot okay. of different designs. Uh, here is a handbag that is made by Doll Baby Bags, oh. and it's made out of Levi's jeans and leather. <sighs> nice, mm -hmm. nice. So I guess they got that okay. We can kind of hold that up. <laughs> Whoa, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. Nice, though. That is so cute. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, you know, it kind of reminds me of, they have a big Christmas show at the State Fairgrounds every year. I oh, can't really? think of the name of it. Okay. Anybody know the name of that? show that's I can't think of it but it's it's hugely popular every okay. year and you have all okay. these unique vendors that come in from all over the country oh wow uh, holiday mart holiday mart at the Indiana State oh, Fair okay yeah. okay so, only it's mid, middle of the summer okay kind of thing. yeah very nice okay now is there a cost to get in or you just come in and it's walk around free it's absolutely free um, in addition to the vendors that are there we have a fashion show that is amazing get out what time is that it's throughout the duration of oh, the she event. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. We have a fashion show and also we have uh, local entertainment. Oh, really? So a lot of the local artists that are here in Indianapolis, um, they can contact, actually they can look it up, the she event Indy, and uh -huh. there is a form on there if they'd like to perform. Okay. Oh, yeah, wow. they just, yes, contact Donzella Kenzie, and she's with Diamond Discussion, and they can uh, contact her to showcase, you know, okay. their talent. Okay. okay. And we also have an artist table where the artists are able to go there and meet, you know, the attendees okay. and tell them about their... I love it. I love it. Now, let me, let me, because I want to put something out there. Okay. Because people watch and they go, oh, this sounds great. It's Lafayette Square Mall. A lot of, a lot of people shy away from Lafayette Square Mall. Mm -hmm. You say what to that from those who might be hesitant or it's like, oh, you know, I used to go there. I don't go anymore. They think it's trouble or it's not the way it used to be. What do you say to them? The SHE event brings a whole new environment to wherever they are located. 
They do. Mm -hmm. We we bring a good vibe wherever we go. Mm -hmm. We are going to be the awakening of Lafayette Square Mall. I promise okay. you. I promise you that. Yeah, it'll never be the same. Uh, okay. Yeah, it'll never okay. be the same. Okay. Now, so is this your first year there? It's You're the first time oh, there. Oh, there. Okay, but you've mm -hmm. been other places before. Yes, we did. Got you. Um, the she event in April was at the YMCA in Avondale Meadows. Nice. Okay. Okay. in which we awarded a student with a scholarship. So we also oh. give scholarships every year. Okay, it's, wow, that's very cool. So we get to shop and help people oh, yeah. and kids and all that stuff too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and, you know, and I'm with you, and I, people shy away. I go over there, I mm -hmm. walk around all the time at Lafayette mm -hmm. Square Mall, and I go to Shoppers World because I got really cool oh, yeah. bargains, but this, uh, I don't know why people get so antsy, but yeah. I just wanted to get that out there in front oh, of people yeah. say, you know, don't be scared. Go. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of, you know, you hear things in the news, and you know, but it's people who, anywhere, wherever they are, I don't care if they're in, in Carmel, I don't oh, yeah. even pick on Carmel, but no matter, oh, yeah. you know, the Bible it says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. He didn't say people in the suburbs are an exception to that. <laughs> so I just wanted to, to put that out there, that it's it, it's going to be a really cool event. It's so. going to be a cool event. Every time we have this event, it's like a huge family reunion. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we come together and we just love on each other. We have a good time. Okay. Well, speaking of time, we're out of mm -hmm. time, but oh. I sure appreciate you <laughs> coming you. in and telling us about mm -hmm. the SHE event. This has uh, been Katina Washington, who is yes. the creator of it all. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to come. I'm going to be there. Thank you. All right. And we appreciate you coming on Inside Indy. Okay. okay. Thank you right. for inviting me. All right. And <laughs> we'll be back with more here on Inside Indy after this. We're back here on Inside ND, and uh, if I were to ask you, what would be the number one concern of most Americans right now? And you'd probably answer health care, and particularly for senior citizens. But we have some answers and some solutions, some long-term solutions for you <laughs> here on Inside ND this evening. Joining us in the studio to provide those answers, uh, Sandra Harris. Mm -hmm. Okay, president of Harris Consulting Enterprises. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And then we have Larry Perio. Perario. Perario. <laughs> Say that three times. Yeah. A national sales director of Advocate Financial. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Good Glad to be, to be here. here. Wow, this is this is a hot topic. It's going to be a hot topic in the upcoming um, mm -hmm. election, Absolutely. presidential election as mm -hmm. well, and all the mm -hmm. other uh, other races involved. You have a concept in a way, a solution to help seniors who are trying to figure it all out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to interpret it, right. to help them navigate through it all. So, right. Sandra, tell us how you can help us with that and the solution. Thank you, Kelly. Um, the key aspect of the health care senior centers is the major concept. And we're going to bring this concept into the churches mm -hmm. and the local community, where we actually develop healthcare senior resource centers within the walls of the church. Of the church. Okay. Mm -hmm. With the blessings of the pastoral leadership. That's, the, that's one of the key factors. And in that particular development, uh, we will be working with seniors at the grassroot level helping them to decipher, you know, the benefits, the services. It's, it's so confusing at times mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. most of these senior plans uh, today is, has a provider network, and it's key that they stay within that provider network. Mm -hmm. And when they stay within the provider network receiving those services, their costs are far lower. But many times they don't know that they're seeing right. a doctor or another type of benefit services outside of they the network. Outside of the network, exactly. and then boom, you get hit with these That's unexpected And it's like, oh my God, well, yes, exactly. And mm. guess what? They have to pay those costs. Mm. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Even when yeah. you don't, ignorance is not an excuse. It in is other not words. an excuse. Okay. And so okay. as long as they stay within the health plan co-payment guidelines, mm -hmm. those co-payments are very, very small. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Larry, you were over there nodding your head like you wanted to add to that. So go right ahead. <laughs> well, as Sandy said, the, the concept of Medicare is confusing for a lot of seniors. It's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So what we do with this whole program is we provide educators, not salesmen, mm -hmm. educators. So we can help them navigate through all that information see what their options are, what is the best option for them. Uh, if they don't know what those are, they won't use them. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, they end up in worse health than, than mm -hmm. if they had nothing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the whole point is to find a way to have them feel comfortable with it. That's the biggest thing. And uh, that's why we have selected to look at what resource in the community will bring instant credibility for those people to say, I can listen to this person. The pastor's not there to use them. Uh, his church staff isn't there to use them. They're there to serve them. And so you take the whole sales concept out of it and come in as an educator, help that pastor, help that church staff be that resource for those people. They don't have to go outside the community. It's right there for them. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have you know, a healthier senior population mm, and getting the information from a source that they trust that's absolutely exactly right yes. now how do you get into the different churches i mean is, is this whole concept of a senior health resource center are you going door to door and no no we are not okay. no we are working with and we won't mention any names quite yet <laughs> okay but we are working with uh, the leaders at the top level of the ministers alliance here in the state of indiana hmm. okay and so um, hopefully we will sign the letter next week um, for that to happen. We have to bring in all the entities for that. But okay. we do have their um, approval, verbal approval. Mm -hmm. And so they are pushing this particular um, concept very, very quickly because they realize how important it is mm -hmm. to really assist their membership in helping them to understand and, and cipher through these health care plans that causes a great deal of confusion. So will they contact the churches and say, this is coming your way? How, how will the actual infiltration happen? It will happen at the senior level of the ministry. Uh, we're working with the president and mm -hmm. their database. And ah, so okay. our concentration so. will be right here in Indiana for right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope to go national within a year, mm -hmm. uh, but we want to make sure that we take care of our home state first. Okay. <laughs> okay. One of the other big concerns mm -hmm. is pastors. Yes. Um, when I first went into the ministry myself, I was told, opt out of Social Security because you're getting paid by the church. So opt out of Social Security on a, on a religious basis, and that was a legal thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I did. What most of these pastors don't understand is that they spend 30, 40 years serving people and then they retire and find out they might have $500 worth of Social Security coming in on a monthly mm. basis. Mm -hmm. So they have no retirement. Right. So right. what we've done is created a means where, so if there's any pastors listening and would like to, to uh, talk to us about how we can help them, the idea here is to create a way where they can create sustainable income um, that will take them through their retirement where they can enjoy it um, and, and take care of their family. So that's, that's part of what this program is. And for me, that's pretty significant to be able to see as a pastor. And, and that was my next question. How do you generate sustainable income? And so is this more like investing in, say, like 401ks, but it's a different no. avenue? No, what we're uh, attempting to do, again, working at the grassroots levels, of these community churches, looking at, uh, and this is what we've asked the Alliance to do, look at your um, church membership across the board, mm -hmm. identify professionals that are already in the insurance industry. So we'll take the path of least resistance first and um, look at their credentials because in order to really um, 
serve in the Medicare part, you have to be certified. You can't, mm -hmm. life and health is very important to have those licenses, mm -hmm. but in order to uh, serve in that particular aspect of the industry, you have to have another layer of certification. And so we will be the trainers, the developers uh, for that. Right. Okay. And if we fall short, then we will recruit outside um, educators okay. to come in and work mm -hmm. with the churches. So what does the training consist of and how long? And is that a tedious process? Not really, mm -hmm. no. It's um, the actual training and licensing is, is probably take them a month maybe to do the whole whole process. Then I do a one day training class with them to get them to where they're, they know the answers, they know how to present what they need to present to these folks. Uh, and then we work with them to in their first few sales just to make sure they understand what they're doing because we don't want them to make a mistake with that with that senior right. and mm -hmm. then uh, after that there's ongoing income coming into the church from those from those enrollments most mm -hmm. of those plans are zero premium plans so the senior's not paying anything okay. it's all right. the, the medicare that, that pays for it so um, it's an it's a good program for both the church for that pastor and for that community. Mm. When, you have, when you have seniors who understand what their health options are, they're gonna be healthier. And um, that, that's the key there. So it's a win-win for everybody is what we're looking at. Right. Mm -hmm. now, is there a director of this, of this initiative? Is there a director? Being you. <laughs> Sandra, okay. okay. Work. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah, you got your work cut out for you. Absolutely. Yes. But this is a passion for me. Um, yes, I already spend long hours in the field. Uh, and I've been in the Medicare industry um, going into my 14th year. Wow. And um, it's certainly a, a passion for me, so I don't really look at it as work. Right. Uh, we, we need to get the word out there so our seniors will have a better experience with their health care plans and programs. And I want to make a change. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so and speaking of change, what do you see as the overall benefits to this, to the community and obviously to seniors? Right. Um, first of all, helping them to navigate their plans, to understand their benefits, and their coverage limits, because there's always limits, mm. okay, in every plan, whether you're in Medicare, Medicaid, or regular major med uh, insurance. Mm. So mm -hmm. they need to understand that there are limits to these plans. And in the process of really choosing a plan, because they have an opportunity every year mm -hmm. between October the 15th and December the 7th mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. assess their their current plan with the new plans that are coming out for the effective date of January 1st of 2020. There are changes every year. Okay. They go through, meaning uh, our Medicare recipients, not knowing these changes. You know, they're so right. bombarded with all this mm -hmm. information coming in right. and it's just too much feed for them. And so <laughs> they just kind of tune out, uh, but mm -hmm. then they're shocked when they start utilizing their plan, even if they didn't change, they should know if any changes in their current plan mm. uh, may not have the same provider network. Huge mistake for them. Right. Huge mistake. You know, what about um, when it comes to something that you do receive uh, on your bill and say the insurance paid for part of it? Um, I've got a situation going on now where uh, I had a procedure done. It's supposed to be covered under our insurance, and, I, and mm -hmm. um, um, but and everybody, in, like including corporate, said I shouldn't have have been charged for that. Right. So what exactly. happened? And 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 I know you don't know for sure. Yeah. I mean, we have to research it. But well, there's a process that yeah you have to go through. First of all, you want to go back to the provider network that assessed that particular okay. Uh, services. Okay. So you just go back to your doctor and say, hey. You know, okay. something that's, because that's happened to me in life. Okay. And I just went back to the source, and that's what we tell our uh, Medicare recipients. You know, you mm -hmm. have to start at, you know, door okay. one and okay. see why. 
They're telling me I'm out of time. Oh, my We got to go, but this has been uh, just incredible information. <laughs> uh, contact information, if people, we've got some stuff on the screen, yes. like website okay. that people can go to. Yes, yes. Um, well, for my phone number, 317-506-6560, and that's Harris Consulting Enterprises, because I'm housed right here okay. in um, the Indianapolis area. Okay. Uh, Larry is in the south, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then Advocate Financial, who is assisting us in this new endeavor is located in Fort Wayne. Okay, so okay. got mm -hmm. details on the screen. Right. Sandra Harris and Larry Pereira. Oh, mm -hmm. There you go. Very good. good. Okay. You got it. <laughs> thank you both so much for joining thank us. You're welcome. Thank you. On Happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. I'm Kelly Vaughn. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.